So it's not easy to concentrate on the time. Okay, so we're, we're talking about here, about the, 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 we mustn't forget what it is that Rabbi Nachman is, is telling us. Rabbi Nachman is telling you that the neshama of a person and the money comes from the same place. The cast okay. also comes from the same place. So mm. when Hashem wants to give you a bracha of parnasa, he does it, he does it in this roundabout way by, by putting yourself, by putting you in a situation where you can get angry. Now, if you just hold your horses and you don't get angry, so you'll get the money. So he wants to bring you a proof now that the neshama of the person and the money is one and the same thing. And he wants to do this through a pasuk that, that in Eschir Yom, you have to pay him on the same day. And the reason for that is, is he's put himself out for you. Ki elav no seed nafsho. So he's, he's put himself out on a limb for you. So now you have to compensate him immediately. You mustn't. That's the pshat. Now Rabbi Nachman goes a step further than that. And he tells you that no seed nafsho doesn't only mean that he's put himself out on a limb for you. In other words, no seed nafsho in the pshat is he's risked his life for you or his well-being for you. He says it's not just that. It's that plus what else? He wants to learn that nafsho and money is one and the same thing. The mamon and your neshama is one and the same thing. That's what he wants to learn. And he wants to bring you a proof from this pasuk. So I'm going to tell you what Rabbi Nachman says. He says like this. No said, nafsho sheshal lefaresh otam gam kemerim umale et nafsho. Klomar. Beksher shela Torah shelanu ha pasuk melamed she ha poel ha mekabel et zharo no se umale et nafsho hazara le shorsa ha shoresh ha rohani she mimenu novea ha mamon zharo. When a person is, is doing a job for you, there's an element of difficulty in that. So every time a person is doing a job for you, he's going back. He's going back. He wants to be matzliya. It's obviously not something that's easy for him. He's an honest person. Talking, we're talking about honest people here. So he goes back. He connects himself with who he is because that's why he's working. He's working because he's a serious person. He's the person that wants to be married, that wants to have a family, he wants to have a parnasa. So when he's working, he takes it very seriously. And when he's doing the job, he's in touch. He's praying that everything should go good, that you should pay him, and so on and so forth. So here, it doesn't really mean he's risking his life. Here, it means he's connecting with what who he really is, because he understands that as unpleasant as this might be, he would be better off if he had his feet up on the sofa watching TV or even just reading a good book or learning or whatever it is. But he's come to your house or to whatever place to, so that he can fix whatever it is that you need fixed. So by doing that, yeah, he's putting himself out for you, but he's also connecting with his own self because the reason why he's doing that, he's not doing this for fun, is so that he can, he, can, he, can, he can actualize himself in this world. So Rabbi Nachman says, so the Shoresh al-Ruhani is, is his khar. In other words, the fact that he's connected by putting himself out for you, and he's, he's taken on this difficulty and prayed to Hashem and connected to himself and come closer to himself by doing this job for you, so now the money that you give him is, is exactly what, 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 what he's coming to contact with. That, what, that's what Hashem wants that should happen. That he should be able to get money so he can actualize himself in this world. Do you understand that? So you're sort of like in turn, you're doing exactly what you're expected to do by, he, by actually paying him he actually is connecting himself to his source and therefore by you doing it you're doing him the favor so you're doing double as much uh, sort of yeah 
let's not forget what Rabbi, see, we, we are not really, we live in a very, unfortunately, very cynical world where for a person to say that he's honest is not, you know, it's not so cool. People like to think, um, I work, I do little and I make a lot of money. That's unfortunately the, but in the, in Torah terms, in real terms, when a person works, he, he, he would rather not have to go, he would rather stay at home and not, and not have to go to work. He, in fact, he might not even be interested in being in this world. He, you know, what do I need it for? You know, I'm, I'll go, you know, <laughs> rather not be here, Bichlal. You know, he has to get up in the morning, go to you, put up the, with a lot of discomfort, a lot of difficulty. The job might not be too easy. He doesn't know whether you're going to pay him or not uh, on the spot. He doesn't know what to charge you because he might say, no, it's too expensive, whatever it is. It's a headache, in other words, you know. It's unpleasant. He's going to have to tell you the price. You might negotiate, whatever it is. And the job in itself is not easy. So every time a person deals with a customer, if, you, if you're honest, I'm talking about a person that is honest and he works for what he does and he charges you for the job that he's done. A person now, you, you know, you, you, we do these things automatically, so we don't really think about these things anymore. But in actual fact, every time a person is going to do a job for you, he's putting himself out big, big time, and he's thinking, what am I doing this for? What do I need this for, Bichlar? You, he doesn't need it. What does he need? That you have a problem with your washing machine? What does he, what does he care, really? I mean, it's not going to affect his life whether your machine works or not. And he's not there to, do, to help you out. He's there because for whatever the reason, that's his job. And Hashem wants him to work hard and to understand that if he doesn't do this, this is something that happens subconsciously in, in a person's mind. But every time a person does a job and puts himself out for a client, he's thinking these things. I'm doing this so that I can, I can stay married, be a panasa to my wife and my children, and my children can go to yeshiva, whatever it is, and my wife can be happy and we can celebrate Shabbat. Every time, so what is he doing all this for? He's doing all this for so he can get closer to Hashem. People don't work for the sake of it, yes. not for the yes. fun of it. So yes. it's a sort of tefillah. Every time you do a job, you are elevating your soul to its source. That is, I'm talking about honest people, not people that send you a bill and they haven't yeah, yeah. even yeah. looked at the file. I'm not talking about, you know, I'm talking about, you know, let's take a yeah. job like a carpenter or a plumber or, a, or a, you know, an electrician. I'm not talking about, you know, there are jobs, unfortunately. I'm talking about, just let's think in simple terms. This guy is working for an hour or two in your house and he's got a job and a half. And sometimes he, he's connecting this cable to, and it doesn't work. And, he, and eventually it works and everything is fine and dandy. And he looks up to you and he says, you please pay me. How much is it? You tell, he tells you 150 pounds. And he comes out with 150 pounds in his pocket and he's, he's two, two hours closer to death. He's wasted two hours of his life with you. But why has he done that? He's done that because he wants to fix himself. He wants to bring himself closer to Hashem by living in this world and having a family yeah. and kids. Like I said, I'm repeating myself a bit, but I, I want to make the point so that you understand that all these things we do with subconsciously, but we wouldn't do anything if we don't need to do it. If you don't need to work, if you've got the money, why should you bother? You know, unless you need it. So every time we do something, you are consciously while you're doing the job thinking, all these things. So now, Hashem decided that this person, when he finishes the job, you're going to pay him exactly to the extent that he connected to his nefesh, to, to his place up there. Mm -hmm. And that's why mm -hmm. the nefesh and the money is the same thing. In real terms, the money that you're going to have is not because you fixed this washing machine. I know that it sounds a little bit funny to you guys, yeah, but when we talk about Torah, you have to understand something that you have to deal with two realities. 
There's the reality that you see with your eyes, and there's a different type of reality. The different type of reality is that really, really, you don't need to work. For you to have money, you don't need to work. Bichlal. If you would be what you should be, if you would be connected to, to what your source means, to who you really are, which is, the neshama comes from shamayim, from Hashem, you would have parnasa without even lifting up a finger. So Hashem puts you in a situation, if you, that is, if you're lucky enough to be smart, be honest, where you could do whatever it takes for you to be able to make a parnasa, whatever it is, whether it's a carpenter, whether it's a painter, whether it's an electrician, whatever it is, no job is, uh, is, is, is not good enough for a person that's honest. Mm -hmm. And the reason for that is because that job is going to connect you to who you really are. And when the person pays you, 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 you think he's paying you because you fixed his washing machine or you painted his house. That's not the real reason. Hashem says, this guy is going to make that money because he's connected to me and he has understood something that he needs to do this job for whatever the reason. There are a million and one thoughts that are going to cross Every time he's painting the house, a million and one thoughts that, that this guy, you know, what am I doing here? What am I doing this? Whatever it is. And that, to the extent that that connects him to his source, to Hashem Barach, he gets paid for that. Not for doing the job. Because Hashem can give you parnasah without you lifting your finger if you're connected to the right place and you just say one fila in condition. So, so, That's the fact, what Rabbi is telling. so the fact that sometimes when it comes to, to your mind, you think that maybe you are in the jo wrong job or you're doing uh, something wrong in your life that you don't get the money. It's, it's not at all the, the, the job that you're doing. It's, it's, it's all about anger. And at the same time, but we have to... We have well, to uh, uh, if, I, if I understand you properly, excuse me for interrupting, but... I don't want to lose the, the, the point here. If, if for example, right. you, you, you're doing a job and you don't really think that, that you think that the job is below you, below your dignity. I'm talking about more, the, more than ca capability. Let, 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 me, let me finish. Let, ah. me, let me finish. Because okay. let's not complicate life. We've got a point. There's some sincerity here. I want to capitalize on that. If that's the only thing that you can do because you don't have another job, right? For you to think that is anger because you, you think that Hashem has made a mistake. You should have a much better job. You don't have it. So why don't you accept that? That that's what, you, what Hashem wants for you. It's anger, yeah, for sure. Not that about it. Not to do the job that you can do to have a parnasa is also anger. Say, for example, I'm going to stay home because that job is below me. Uh, that's the, the only thing that you can do right now. In fact, I would say that the, 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 whatever it is that you can do now, do it and progress like that. The best lesson for that is the, the story of the, 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 the shoemaker. I don't know if you ever read the story of the shoemaker there where he eventually becomes the Chacham and the Tam. The, the Chacham is a guy that doesn't think there's a job that's ever good enough for him. He's too, too good for every job. The Tam is a guy that doesn't even know how to make a pair of shoes. He makes triangular shoes and eventually he becomes the most important person after the king. In the, why? Because he's honest. And, and when, uh, when a person is looking, the person has a lot of money, the most important is to hire somebody that you can depend on. And he's a dependable person. So therefore, he becomes the viceroy, the most important person after the king. Well, it doesn't take a genius to figure out what Rabbi Nachman is telling you. And that is that if you're sincere, so Akadosh Baruch Hu, who's the king, will trust you and he'll give you everything that you want if you just do what he wants you to do. This is the best job that you can do now. So this for you is the best job. There's nothing better for you. And you'll go up and up and up. But you have to start where Hashem wants you to start. What is it that Hashem wants? Where does Hashem want you to start? Where you are? That's your job. You don't have another job. You have another job, take it. 
you don't have another job, go to work. Ah, it's below my dignity? No, it's not. Because Hashem wants you to connect from that job. Because that's how you connect to Hashem, through that job. So therefore, Hashem says, Pay him immediately on the spot. Don't wait till next week. Because today that's his job. Tomorrow that might not be his job. If he learns his lesson, he won't have to lift up another finger. That's why you have to pay him on the day. Because Hashem says, today that's your job. Tomorrow we'll see how you behaved. How did you connect to me? Did you accept your job? Did you, did you do it properly? Did you pray to me that it should come out right? Did you charge the right price? Did you connect with who you really are while you're doing the job? You did? Ah, very good. So now you're going to get paid on the day. Tomorrow maybe you're a millionaire. Who knows? On the spot. But today you get paid for what you did today. That's why the Mizvah to, to pay the guy on the spot. Hashem is not kovea anything. He's not, you're going to be like this for the whole month or the whole year. Not even for the whole week. Just for today, you're that. Tomorrow? We'll see. We'll talk about it tomorrow, Hashem says. Let's see what you're holding, how you pray to me. Let's see how we connect. Let's see if you lose your temper or do you accept my will with a smile. When a smile, I mean, not just with a smile, Chitsoni. Are, are you happy in your heart also that this is the best thing that I'm trying to help you to connect to me? Do you accept your situation? Are you happy with the help that I'm giving you? You are happy? Mm, very interesting. So you see from here, that the money that you get for the job, say for example, if the job is 150 pounds, that 150 pounds has a lot of kedusha, because that 150 pounds comes from the place where you connected, where your neshama, the tikkun that you have to make in this world. So that 150 pounds is going to fix you, is going to help to fix yourself. Because it's fluid, Neshama. So the money of a Jew has a lot of Kedusha. It's Neshama. Namash. Well, it's not something you throw. You have to know how to invest your money. Don't throw it. Use it for Mizvot. Because whatever you use for Mizvot, that is not part of the Cheshbon. What you use for the education of your children, for Shabbat, for Chagim, for Tfilin, for, for, for learning Torah like we're doing now. You buy Sfarim, you help others, you buy them books. You organize Shiurim like you guys that do in Baruch Hashem. You know, you, I see that you're getting more and more into it or whatever it is, which is interesting. And you know, it's, it's good to see that you're progressing and so on and so forth. You're not new to this, Baruch Hashem. I know Josh, I know Mesod, and I know you, Eric. Baruch Hashem, all that is you're investing your, same, your, 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 your time in real time. Because that, what you're spending on or what you're not working while you're doing this or whatever it is that you're doing, is something that's not by Hezbon. Whatever in, in Rosh Hashanah they said you're going to get, this is not counted. The extra, this Hashem gives you as a gift. So Hashem is not only helping you by not charging you, but on top of that, he's, you, you become, you, you, you're fixing yourself more and more all the time. It's a tremendous, a tremendous, a tremendous opportunity that a Jew has to learn Torah. Anyway, it's a deep thought. Think about what I told you. Uh, I know it's, it's a bit, sounds a bit unusual. There are many examples that I could give you, but we don't have a lot of time, unfortunately. It's only like uh, under an hour every day. But Baruch Hashem, you know, there's a lot of siyata Ishmaya, And Hashem will help me to be able to, as I have so, so far, been able to, to yeah. come across in some way or another. Sometimes, to me, it seems like an impossible tact. I don't know how it's happening, this, but it's happening, Baruch Hashem. You're getting... A lot of um, Torah, Baruch Hashem, and so am I. Anyway, Hashem should help you. Amen. And tomorrow we'll carry Amen. on. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Uh, Thank I have you. a question, Rabenu.